Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. Today guys, we're going to be talking about the initial game, how to survive the initial game with some of the important dinos, important things you need to do, and all that kind of stuff, stuff you need to pay attention to. So we're going to go ahead and go all this. Let's go ahead and start off with dinosaurs that we're going to need. As you guys can see, I've got a whole group of them in front of me. I'll explain why each one's so important in front of us. So first things first, uh, we have a male and female dodo. Um, those are always good first tames to have. You guys can have them to defend you a little bit. They do a little bit of damage. And of course, Dialogues are always nice to have uh, for early game. They do help you a little bit. If you get attacked by something, you can leave them to die. They're very simple to tame. Just a couple meats. If you kill a dodo, you get the dialogues. And so on and so forth. Uh, other dinos you want to get are definitely um, the trike. is one of my first ones I prefer to get. And if you guys can snag... Uh, a, a raptor that's always nice, but trikes I like specifically because you guys can get um, them to ride around, you hit bushes, and you get a bunch of narcotics and berries and stuff. And also, if they get attacked by something, they have a knockback, so it's very hard for things to kill it. I've killed many an alpha carno or alpha raptor just with a trike alone, so that knockback is huge. And of course, you need a Fiomia. Now, we need a Fiomia for fertilizer, as many people wonder, well, why would you want fertilizer right away? Well, basically, in a nutshell, if you guys get a cooking pot and you've got these dodos making eggs, which is why I've got a male and a female here, with the Fiomia, if you guys are constantly looting uh, green and blue drops, uh, you have a chance to get irrigation system, stone irrigation system, and then the blue drop, you have a chance for a medium crop plot. So you guys have a chance to get those, and if you get that, you can make rock carrots. And once you get rock carrots going, you can use that to tame your pterodons with kibble. Pterodons take dodo kibble, and that allows you to get there. All the rest of this is for protection. This one's good for getting berries and stuff, but obviously you can't get rock carrots without planting it. So this gives you the option for that. So uh, that's the basics of getting birds and animals and things of that nature. That's, that's kind of why you want everything. You do definitely want some kind of berry gather. You guys can replace this with an iguanodon. You guys could do a stego if you wanted to or, or anything of that nature uh, and you want some kind of base defender something that you don't care about dying or anything that's why i said you know some dilos are fine you can send them off to go die themselves a good raptor that you can ride around that's a quick mount that's always nice to have so you can go get those uh, things and then as i said a fiomia is more for the poop uh, for those of you who are wondering the reason i like fiomia so much is if we go ahead and jump over here real quick uh, what you guys can do is you guys can take all your little stem berries in here in these fiomias right so there's no poop in there fiomias can poop like crazy if you uh, if you give them a bunch of stem berries. So if you guys watch, I'm going to go ahead and just throw some stem berries in there. And there we go. We got some extra poop. Uh, I made it poop early. Obviously, the more stem berries you have, and that's why I said if you've got a bunch of stem berries, which you get from the trike, you can go ahead and put them in the Fiomia. He poops a lot. You put the poop into the fertilizing bin and so on and so forth. So that's where we're at for that. So now I'm going to talk about the building and some of the weapons you want to have. So if you guys look at my inventory, I've got the basic weapons, not this. Uh, don't don't worry about that. We'll just ignore that. Uh, you want to obviously get your hatchet and your pickaxe. That's great. But a bow, a slingshot, and a bola. And these are what I prefer. I like bolas because you can wind up, you can knock pretty much dismount or not dismount, but uh, lock down most of the early game dinos that you're going to find on the beaches, raptors, dilos. You're gonna start, you can get pterodons. You can knock out a pterodon really early. Obviously, the saddle's at 38, but you can stop a pterodon if you find a nice good one. And I like slingshots, and you can also use clubs, but slingshots are nice for when you are taming your trike over here. Uh, just remember, guys, when you are taming a trike, do not hit them in the head. You have to hit them in the body. Uh, if you hit them in the head, they take one-fifth damage. So I believe if you hit them in the head with a basic primitive uh, slingshot, I think it does six damage. In the body, it does 38 damage. So that's a big big difference between the two it's around one-fifth obviously that wasn't exactly but if i remember correctly that's what the numbers are so make sure you guys are hitting those trikes in the body the rest of them you can hit in the head and get bonus damage trikes are the one of the few animals that have face armor so you don't want to hit them in the head so uh, as i said those are the big ones i like to have with me for early game they really assist me and help me in taming stuff obviously these uh, you can just punch out um and they don't run very quickly they're very slow you guys can see they're like oh, they're all angry and they just kind of waddle away not a big deal uh dilos i've done many a time punch them out uh, but you can use your uh, slingshot just to hit them in the face a couple times, they'll pass out. And uh, these, I would definitely suggest trying to use a slingshot and get on top of a rock or something. Um, that's the other thing I wanted to show over here, you guys. Uh, you guys can jump on some rocks. If you guys can get like a rock like this, where it's got a nice big flat face, and you can run up the back of it. If you can fight the thing from this side, if I can get up here on this rock. Come on, get on the rock. Oh my goodness. Come on, get on the rock. Please get on the rock. 
Oh my goodness. Okay, well basically, I even right here almost, if I probably got a running start, I probably can get up there. There we go. So uh, as you guys can see, you've got a nice flat base. Nothing can get up here. Even trikes can't get on these rocks. So there's always nice rocks laying around. Make sure you guys check them. Uh, don't let them get on the backside, though. That's the catch. And when trikes are here, you can hit them in the back. So when the trikes here, let's see if I can get that trike from here with a whistle. See how good I am. Trike. I don't think I got it. So we'll go ahead and pull the trike over so you guys can see. Oh, I did get it. Look at that. And then my HUD on, so I didn't see it. So if we pull the whistle right there, you guys can see the trike is going to attempt to run around. It can't. Oh, there it comes. Now it's going to come, of course. We'll run ahead run back up here. And it's going to follow me. It's just like if it was attacking me. However, in this case, it's not going to. If I can get on the rock again, I'm going with that elusive rock. But you guys can see that even when the trike's attacking, you can clip it in the back right here. So if we take our slingshot out, let's go ahead and just equip this real quick. You guys can see that um, I can still hit it in the back right there. Boom, right in the butt. So that's what you want to do, uh, and you guys can hit it, and that's why I like to use the rock method when I'm taming my tyke. Um, and that's really one of the biggest tips I can give you guys. Uh, make sure you guys have a bunch of slingshots and stuff on you. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop that guy right there. He's fine right there for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you guys my basic build I like to do. Uh, it's a very simple build early on. Obviously, you guys can replace this, and if you're getting those blue drops and green drops, you have a chance to get nice uh, armor and stuff like that for it so um, let me take this off my thing there we go so what you want to do um, is the first thing is is I like to build a thatch foundation on one and then what you want to do is you're actually going to end up building a uh, you're going to kind of cheese the system a little bit here so then you guys have uh, wood pillars uh, even if you don't have this early game, obviously you guys can get around this, but once you get wood pillars, I highly suggest using this method that I'm about to show you. And then you're going to lower your foundation, so we should be able to queue it. There it is. And then I should be able to place another thatch foundation right on top, but we're not going to do that yet. I need to tear up uh, these two things right here, so I want to make it so it's even, and, and you want a... Uh, you want to kind of hide it a little bit. You might be able to get away with it. Some people might see it. So if you want, uh, I highly suggest you pull out the second thatch floor. And what we're going to do is uh, mess it up completely like an idiot. I meant to not do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, show you guys again here real quick. Uh, basically, some of the methodology behind this. Um, I have to kind of, unfortunately, do this again. So basically what we're doing is we're lowering the foundation. The reason we're lowering the foundation is I'm going to be hiding a mortar and pestle in there. So we're not going to do that yet. So I apologize. So what we'll do is we'll grab our mortar and pestle that we've crafted. This is one of our earliest things that we want to do. Um, I've got one of them here. You'll throw it down, and then you actually can hide stuff in your mortar and pestle here. Um, I'm going to turn my HUD on so I can see what I'm clicking. And then what you want to do is you basically are going to be building a door afterwards, but we need to make... Um, I didn't mean to make that. There we go. We got that. So we can go ahead and actually then stack our things on top of this. You can do it two down. I would suggest doing a little bit higher than this. I'm just showing you for now um, what you guys can do. So you can tight it like that. And then if you wanted to, you can then add another thatch foundation underneath. We'll make a couple more thatch foundations just so uh, it works just fine. You can do them three down. You can tear up the whole thing if you really wanted. Uh, and I would just suggest then coming over here, placing your bottom one again. And then placing your top one again here. And there we go. And I don't know why this keeps coming up with this. I don't have it in my inventory. Uh, but it is what it is. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and build your base from here. So then we can do ahead and place this. Obviously with thatch it doesn't cover as well. Uh, you guys can see I'll run over here real quick. The reason I tell you to hide that mortar and pestle is you can hide stuff in there. So you guys can see right here there's actually a mortar and pestle hiding in this wall right here. Uh, I can access it from right here. There you guys go. You guys can see there's a mortar and pestle and I hit E on it. And you can see that it's more than pestle. You can kind of see it from the bottom, but you can see it's triple layered. So you do want to leave a gap in the middle, just like that. But we're going to go ahead and I'm just doing a quick little description for you guys. But you can also do uh, this method. You guys can place a box right on top of the edge of it. So if you if you want to, you can place it like this, and you can go like that. And then you can actually access the mortar and pestle from the side, and most people won't see it either. So you have multiple methods. Most people are going to try to destroy stuff. But I want to show you guys just a basic build. You throw those walls down. You do have two foundations down. And there we go. And then you can go ahead and place your stuff on top here. Just a basic wall right in here. We'll place that in there. And that's why I like to have an extra one. And then what you can also do is do nine. Uh, one suggestion I will make is to try to prevent people from breaking your building is leave this box open. Make sure you guys leave it unlocked and fully ready to go. So then they'll steal from that box. And they really won't steal from your mortar and pestle that's hiding around the corner. You guys can see just like that. 
So if you wanted to, you can do that. Then have a second mortar and pestle there so they're not really looking for it or anything. And they're just going to go ahead, loot your stuff, and leave. Make it look like you don't know what you're talking about. That's why I put that box there. Or you can triple stack it. But if you triple stack it, most people are going to get suspicious and thatch. So um, one of the next things that's most important early on is obviously getting a bed. You need a place to respawn. So getting that bed is highly important. One thing about beds you got to remember is you can run through them. They do not block your walking. So I like to put those right in front of my box and stuff. Just try to keep things there they'll probably break your stuff and then what you can do is in the corner right here um you can try to place a campfire or you can put it right here normally they're pretty stackable and there we go so then it's ready I, I broke it a little bit that way you guys can cook your food and stuff on there and and then you're pretty much up and running the last thing is obviously once you get a mortar and pestle uh or not a mortar and pestle once you start getting those farming animals up you're going to need the poop box which is a uh, thatch um, right here so basically what it is guys is if you want to uh, produce it's 50 thatch per item that you produce so I'll get, be able to get one poop fertilizer out of this and you're gonna need two medium poops for per fertilizer so I should have two medium poops probably sitting here oh it just disappeared from me um, unfortunately you need two medium poops you throw them in there it takes some time you can do a bunch of small poops but you have to do the entire thing full of small poops I don't remember exact number you can be one large poop or if you do a massive poop, make sure you put 200 in there. And the massive poops, you can get those some titanosaurs. Uh, they give you three apiece. So uh, make sure you guys are checking those out and looking at them. Uh, but you guys can see that is the basic ideas uh, that we have on here. I don't think there was anything else left on here. As I said, I've got the bow, I've got my, my bola, and I've got my slingshot. And those are basically your main three you want. Bow, uh, eventually you'll get trank arrows, and that's why you want the berry gatherer. And then you're going to have your spoiled meat. That's why you've got your nice little meat dinos here. And basically, you're just going to leave a meat in there, and you can spoil it. And then, as what I said, is I can go ahead, because mortar and pestles are, are, are able to do it. You can jump over here. You can close this door. And I can access my secret mortar and pestle just by leaning to the side just a little bit. There it is. And then what I can do is be like, okay, I want to hide my metal pick in there. I want to hide my good bow and all that kind of stuff. And someone's like, as long as you guys leave this stuff open, most people will not break it. They'll break your front door. Um, which is fine. If you want, leave your front door open. They can just walk in, make it look like uh, you don't care about what's going on. They'll come in. They'll steal all your stuff. Uh, if you have anything in your mortar and pestle, just kind of make it, you know, we well, don't want them to break it and then take it in there. Because no matter what, if you break it where they break in, there's a chance that they're just going to bust in through the side and steal your stuff and break your mortar and pestle that you've got all your stuff hiding in. But as I said, that's your best method. That's about as compact as you can get with everything you need. You can use your storage box for temporary storage and then make it into wooden. As I said, when you're doing all those green and blue drops, you'll be getting wooden buildings and you can start replacing your thatch and just continue to hide those little secret mortars and pestles all over the place so you can use them and just make sure you guys get those compost bins. The other reason you want the drops is they do give you a full water system. Uh, make sure you guys have an intake and an external and then you guys can get those rock carrots started right off the bat and that's why you want the Fiomia pooping all the time. You guys can see I don't think I've got any poop. Let's see my trike pooped at all. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. It's the Fiomia. So all you do is you grab a couple poops. Um, we're going to grab one here and then you just throw it in here with it and you can slowly get some some fertilizer from it so uh that's the basic tips i got for you guys make sure you guys um last thing is actually i want to talk about i apologize it wasn't the last tip i looked down I realized it stats are one of the biggest things here guys now my stats are a little out of whack this is my tutorial world that's why i've got so much weight on here but i'm going to be honest with you you want to try to get weight uh, higher up initially uh, along with health and stamina and fortitude so health is going to obviously prevent you from taking you have more health to survive stamina means you can run longer or anything of that nature weight is means you can carry more so you're not doing as much traveling back and forth in time uh, fortitude is probably one of the more important ones um, also Fortitude prevents you from losing food and losing water faster and when you take damage you take less the higher your fortitude so it's a way of saying armor plus resistance to starving and, and dehydrating yourself to death uh, other things you can look at is melee damage melee damage is a good one to have it means you hit harder you also get more resources from uh, trees and everything like that movement speeds nice because you can outrun things i would avoid using crafting skill uh, unless you want plan on using anything extra uh, with crafting and blueprints and stuff but that's later you can always mind wipe out of it especially after you send or anything of that nature so those are your options there um, those are the, the skills make sure you guys get some armor 
uh, and your basic engrams in there. So I hope this gives you guys a good idea of what to run and, and some of the basic stuff that you guys need to get in order to uh, get yourself up and running early game. So uh, as I said, this is just early game information, um, but that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, I hope you guys will subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. If you're not new to the channel, please you guys give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you guys liked the video, or if you didn't like it, let me know why in the comment section down below. Uh, if you guys have any ideas or any questions or need any advice, go ahead and drop a comment in there. Let us know what your questions or concerns are. And I hope that we've helped you guys on this one. So uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.